And now, um, Morty, it's up to you, retired soil scientist, as you told me. Oh, semi Chief Labor. Semi retired. Semi retired. Yeah. Okay, Welcome. thanks, Alistair. Um, my um, paper's title, as you see on the screen, and I'd just like to acknowledge my authors, Jim Moore and, and Derek Moot. I'll just need to put my glasses on because I'm struggling to see that a little bit. So, okay, so I want to go through the research findings in each period in the um, South Island Hill and, Hill, Hill and High Country soils. So, um, if we. Where's the, where's the thing? Here we are. No, I can't see that, so I'll go to this. So, um, basically, we go to the 1950s and 60s, and the major findings there were that on the semi arid and, uh, and pallet soils, the less weathered soils, that the um, pasture production of pea application was only achieved when sulphur requirements were satisfied. So, sulphur was quite important. On the brown and pod soil soils, more weathered ones. Both P S and P were required, and the other major breakthrough from that period was the need for molybdenum for legume growth. 70s, 80s, um, elemental sulphur made a introduction as, as a effective sulphur fertil fertilizer, and for elemental sulphur, finely ground elemental sulphur was very important, especially under lower, lower rainfall. There was also some early work done on higher rates of application of nitrogen fertilizer for. Um, pastures from grass dominant swords in, in, in that period. Okay, so coming through to the um, to the um, 1990s, 2000s, we further work was done on molybdenum and showed that both molybdenum concentration in clovers and nitrogen concentration was important when, when looking for a deficiency. Aluminium made an appearance um, once you got exchange of aluminium levels above five, per, five part per million, lime was required to increase your soil pH to 5.5 to alleviate that. And, and there was also starting to do a bit of work, which is early introduction to the variable rate application that's, um, that both fertiliser companies can provide at the moment. We found that there were differences in um, responses to P, depending on aspect and slope. So I now, now want to move on to some of the knowledge gaps for further research. And the first one of these is the differential application of nu nutrients. So we think that there needs to be more work done on, um, on more P responsive brown soils. And, um, and generally, also, some of the work that needs to be done also on putting lime and, and finely ground elemental sulfur together where you don't need phosphorus on a lot of the high country soils. The nutrient requirements established in pure legume swords. Basically, we're doing a trial at the moment, two sites on the effect of nitrogen on the establishment of legumes, so that's being done. And also just to investigate the, the strategies such as herbage, treating, grazing in, in brown top dominate, pa, dominant pastures. Soil acidity and aluminium toxicity relate the spatial distribution of aluminium to landscape. That's being done at the moment, or will be done on Avenal Station and also carry out further work on the effectiveness of soil injection of lime, which was some of that work was done um, two or three years ago, but there's a bit of a lull at the moment. And also design decision trees that allow farmers to optimise their choice of legume species and um, rates of nutrient in lime. And there's a paper that we wrote for next year's proceedings, presumably, that, that actually um, developed that, those decision trees. Okay, I'd just like to acknowledge our funders, Fertiliser Association of New Zealand and also um, Beef and Lamb New Zealand, together with the partners that make up the, um, the, the Hill Country Futures Group, P PGG Rights and Seeds, Seed Force, and the Ministry of. and MB. Thank you.